welcome back to the second part of the tutorial of building a lightweight M2M tracker. So for this tutorial, we continue where we left off. So we're still using this thingy 91 tracking device uh, to track the location and build an application around that. So the device is still connected, as you can see here, it's still registered and the GPS location is sent and shown in the, I the Coyote IoT device management platform. So in this tutorial, I'll continue where we left off. And we already, as I mentioned, we already have the Thingy91 up and running, which uses the lightweight M2M client called NJ, which is connected to the Coyote IoT DM platform. And we have an active integration running with NRF Cloud to derive a quick GPS location. So from Coyote, I want to create an integration with Microsoft Azure IoT Hub and use the stream analytics job to eventually show the, um, the location data in Microsoft Power BI. And it could, something, could look something like this eventually. So let's get started. So first, go to your Microsoft Azure account. And I assume you already have something set up, and if not, you can create a free account. So we go to resources and we search for IoT Hub. So if you have an IoT Hub up and running already, you can of course use that. But for this uh, demonstration, I'm going to create a new one. And next to creating a new IoT Hub, I also want to create a new resource group that we call tracking device. Um, and the IoT Hub name is, I don't know, let's, let's call it a name like tracking hub. Um, but we can um, use everything um, as is. So we click the button create. And this might take a few seconds before this is properly set up. So the deployment is in process. So next to the um, IoT Hub, we also need to have an active um, cloud storage um, resource or what we call blob storage. Um, so also here we are um, searching for the service storage account and we're going to create a new one. So the resource group, make sure you enter the one that you just created. So in my, for, for our case, that's tracking device. So we call it tracking demo without the dash tracking demo. Region, well, let's use the same one as I used before, which was um, Europe, I think West um, and same here we can continue it runs the final validation and at some point we can create it good so we go back to our um, coyote device management so we go to our main um, uh, we go to the main landing page and we click on the button integration and we click hyperscaler integration center. So we go to I, uh, Azure IoT Hub and we click the button connect. So as you can see here, we need the Azure IoT Hub connection string as well as the Azure Blob storage connection string. So let's get this information by going back to our um, Azure platform. So we're now in the storage account tracking demo. So we scroll down a little bit and we go to access keys. And here we need the connection string. So show and copy. And then we go back and we paste this here under Azure Blob Storage. So next up is going to our IoT hub, um, which we called uh, you know, let's find those. Uh, let's find that overview. So we go to tracking hub, um, and <clears throat> let's see. We also scroll down here and we look for the shared access policies. 
So we click on the policy name IoT Hub Owner and we need the primary connection string. So we also copy this one and we paste this into the Azure IoT Hub integration. <coughs> So now we saved and we this and we integrated or we activated the integration. So the next step is that we need to create a new template. So by default, there are some um, lightweight M2M schemas available, but we, but we need to create a new one, um, which uh, supports all of the objects that this uh, application um, um, uses. So, uh, well, let's, let's call it the tracking template and go to the next step. And here we need to add the missing objects. And <clears throat> I created a list which is available in the documentation, which I will link to at the bottom of this video. So that might help you with selecting the right resources. And in my case, that is resource zero. Resource one is already connected here. Resource three is already done here. So we have connectivity monitoring. We have firmware update. We have location. We have temperature, which is, well, I better search for that, 3303. I want to add the humidity. Um, I want to add the accelerometer. Um, I want to add the barometer. Um, what else is included in this application? So there's a push button um, as well as the LED color light. Um, and I think included here is also the ECID signal measurement information and the location assistance. Okay, and I think that is it. So the next step is selecting for the right resources the capability type. And by default, everything is set to property, but for some objects, we need to switch this to telemetry. So we start with the object 3303 um, temperature, and then we need to set the measured values um, to telemetry. Same for um, the humidity and the accelerometer objects. Uh, yes, okay. So we set all of the objects to the right uh, type and now we are going to save this template. And we can see it here in this overview page, tracking template. Next step is to um, go to our to select our endpoint device, we click the three dots here and we click the button connect to Azure. So we are selecting the template, which was tracking template, remember. And uh, we click the button and this may take a few seconds before the integration is properly set up. Okay, perfect. So at some point you can see the confirmation that the integrate integration is properly configured. What we can do here to validate if the connection has been created successfully. So we go to our Microsoft Azure account and we open up the IoT Hub. And then if we go to device management and devices, we should see the device um, that we just added here in the Microsoft Azure overview page. So I'm seeing this make, and that means that the connection has been uh, successfully created. So the next step is to set group value tracking in Coyote. And um, to do so, we are going to the option to the menu device groups. And um, if the connection to the Azure IoT hub was set up properly, then here you find the, um, the, the folder hyperscaler. Um, so we are finding the the subgroup that contains the device and then we are clicking value tracking and now we are adding all of the resources that we want to track so all of the resources um, of which we want to send the data forward to microsoft azure 
Um, and well, one of the things that we start with, so I want to have the temperature um, the sensor value being sent. So I'm adding the resource path and I want this to send, let's say, at least every 10 minutes. Um, or let's say maybe at least every one hour and no more than each five minutes. So we're creating this um, observed resource and we're also going to do that for the different resources. So for humidity and again um, setting the right notification frequency. Again, for the barometer, and of course for the location paths. So um, that means the latitude as well as the longitude. So that has been done. Um, and if this was properly set up, then now it starts forwarding all of this telemetry data to Azure IoT Hub. So let's open up, uh, let's go back to Microsoft Azure. And um, we want to initiate the integration with Microsoft Power BI. So I assume you already have a Microsoft Power BI account set up and if not, make sure you create an account. You can already do so with a free evaluation subscription. Um, so to start here, I want to create a new workspace. So we go to workspaces and we are going to create a new one. Um, now give it again a name like tracking workspace. Oh, there we go and we are going to save this one. Good, so the tracking workspace is set up. So now let's go back to um, Azure IoT Hub. In um, IoT Hub, we scroll down to Hub Settings and we um, click the option Message Routing. Um, <clears throat> so we click the button Add and we are going to create a new name. So I don't know, give it something like event route. Endpoint, we can just um, select events, device telemetry data, which is still fine. And in the routing query, I want to um, paste the following snippet. Um, I'll also make sure like this is also available in the documentation, uh, but this basically forwards all the, um, the, the, the the data that's sent from Coyote in the right format. So we're gonna save this one. And there we already have the confirmation. So now once this route has been created, I want to click the button Enrich Message. And here there are a few things that I want to do. And that is that I want to enrich all of the messages with the latitude and longitude. And so for latitude, I want to add the value twin properties reported lightweight end to end. And this 6.00 refers to the object and the resources of the lightweight end to end standard that um, showcases the latitude. And the endpoint is events. And we are going to do that as well for the uh, longitude. And there's a difference that I know the resource ID 1 um, describes the longitude. So again here we also um, select endpoint events. Now we are going to uh, enable a new resource which is called stream analytics job. So it's a new service that I want to create. Um, so the resource group makes sure you connect it to the right one and you give it a nice name like tracking stream. Um, this doesn't matter too much, but like it makes uh, most sense to use the same one that we used before. So that's a Western Europe um, and we can click the button review and create.
So here on the left side, this is um, the menu that we now want to look into. So first I go to inputs and I create a new stream input and I select IoT Hub. Um, well, give it a nice name, for example, tracking input. You can leave everything like this as default. Um, well, make sure that you select the right uh, IoT Hub. This can be all set to default and we can create the resource. Okay, once that's been done, I'm gonna create a new output as well. So I'm clicking here the add button and I select the button Power BI. Um, and here I'm also giving it a name. So let's do tracking dash output. So I'm gonna provide the Power BI settings manually. Um, so the workspace group. So I just created this Power BI and this workspace group um, there is an identifier that you can find in the URL of the Microsoft Power BI. So this is the part of the URL I need to copy and paste it in here. Authentication mode, I want to select user token. Data set name, it doesn't matter too much. You give it a nice name like lightweight N2M. Um, table name, either doesn't matter too much, let's call it data for now. So click authorize and you go through the wizard. Um, so you log into your Microsoft Power BI account. And once that has been done, it's authorized. And then you can click the button save. So the input has been created, the output is there. So now we need to create a query uh, to format the data um, properly. So there is a script, st yeah, a short script that you can find in the documentation. Um, and I see that we need to do some minor um, updates because you want to make sure that, um, I know you use the um, identifiers, like the names of the input and output that you um, um, created just a second ago. Um, so here we uh, make sure that we format the right data. So we have temperature, humidity, barometer, and the X, Y, Z values from, from the accelerometer. Um, we want to get the metadata property value for latitude and longitude. Um, and there's some further details like processed time um, and the device ID. So that's been set up. I can save the query. So now we can run a short test. So here you see already the input preview. Um, and then if I click on test results and click the button here, test query, then if it's all properly set up, then I should be able to find all of the properly formatted data here below. So as you can see here, you can see the right temperature, the humidity values, um, the barometer values are present. Uh, I don't see the X, Y, Z values yet, um, but maybe that hasn't been sent in the last few seconds. And also latitude and longitude is present. So it seems to be working. Um, so let's click on the overview page and we are going to start this stream analytics job. So after a minute or so, you can see that the stream analytics job has started. And if you wait a few seconds or minutes longer, then you can also see some metrics. But yeah, now we are waiting for a bit until it starts streaming data. And once that is happened, you will find a resource under your tracking workspace. And there we have it. So once the first data package has been streamed to Power BI, it will directly open a new resource. Once we are, we think we have the right um, data, we can click here the three dots and we're gonna collect, um, press the um, option, create report. And this gives us to this um, visualization builder uh, within Power BI. And here, if we open up this data resource, then we can find all of the values that we want to have. 
So to validate if actually real values are already um, added, I'm starting here with creating a table. Um, and I want to have the um, timestamp. Um, I probably want to have the name of the device ID, or ID and I want to have the location data, which is latitude and longitude. Um, and optionally, you can even add the temperature data and the humidity. Um, so here you might want to change this to average instead of sum, so it gives the latest data. Um, and here you can find all the latitude and longitude as well as the temperature data and the humidity data. So this is nice and it seems that data is actually streamed to Microsoft Power BI. So now actually let's start creating some um, nice visualizations. So we can click the button map. And here I want to add the latitude and the longitude. So if you just have the latitude and the longitude here shown, then you directly see, and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can properly see it. Well, you can see here a small blue dot indicating the uh, location of my tracking device. So this is of course only the location. So we can do more interesting things. So for example, um, creating some line charts or some area charts. Um, so yeah, let's, let's make a line chart for now using um, or adding temperature data. And at least you want to plot that with the time on the horizontal axis. So I don't want to have the sum, but I want to have the average values and maybe now it doesn't show too many interesting things because we only have one data point, but once more data arrives in Power BI, it will actually generate some nice visualizations. So we might, um, we might want to do it as well for humidity. Um, I don't know, so we can create a different type of um, um, chart just to play around with. So humidity here, uh, I can have average values. And again, here, once more data arrives, it will actually um, I don't know, make it look more appealing. And then, yeah, we might want to show some values as well. Let's say uh, um, show the latest temperature value. Again, we don't want to have the sum, but we want to have the average temperature, uh, which is then shown here as well. So I don't want to go into that much detail now, but here for each of these visualizations, you can also I know, format the visuals. Um, you can run some further analysis. Um, and here you can I know, add some properties, um, give it a different title. You can change the, the visualizations, the, the, the colors, etc., et, et cetera, to make it look really appealing. So, um, at least for this demo, I think this is good enough for now. Okay, we are going to save. Well, we can give it a nice name, like say tracking dashboard. And there we have it. There we have our visualization with Microsoft Power BI. So to go back and review the parts that we created. Um, so we run the lightweight m 2 n client NJ on the Thingy91 development platform from Nordic. We connected it to Coyote IoT um, device management platform, which is the lightweight m 2 m server. And we set up the integration with NRF Cloud to derive a quick GPS fix. And then we initiated the integration to Azure IoT Hub. Uh, we created a stream analytics job and eventually we managed to showcase the data in uh, Microsoft Power BI. So this was the, um, the overview of the demo building a tracking application. So thank you so much for listening. So now it's time for you to try this out yourself. So wishing you all the best. If you have any questions, there's an active Discord forum, which I would love to invite you to. Again, I will add the link to this uh, at the bottom of this video. So wishing you all the best of luck. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Lawrence and I hope to hear from you shortly.